Hello, I'm Charles Sternbach, and I'm president of Star Creek Energy. And it's really exciting for us to be exploration advisors working with the great team at Mundu Regina to explore the Gas Bay Peninsula of Canada for large and shallow light oil projects. Star Creek has been very active in North America with exploration in Devonian through Ordovician reservoirs. We are producing in several fields out of hydrothermal dolomites, reef fields, and uh, Ordovician sandstones. And these are all very potential targets on the Munda Regina blocks in uh, the eastern Gas Bay. It's really a, a great time to be exploring in Gas Bay. The opportunities are there. There's excitement about Galt Field and the recent work by Junex. And we have uh, permits that have hydrothermal dolomite, major fault strike slip systems, and key reservoirs that are also at Galt Field are on the Munda Regina blocks. Plus, we've identified a series of deeper targets. One of the exciting things for Star Creek Energy in our role as exploration advisors for Munda Regina is we've been able to take a lot of the subsurface um, interpretations, building on the surface geology, surface uh, oil and gas shows, gravity, magnetics, the first seismic recon program ever done on the blocks with uh, a stratigraphic well information from uh, 2009 well drilled uh, confirming that the uh, st stratigraphy uh, for the Forion formation is also present on the Munda Regina blocks as it is and produces at Galt Field. And using, reprocessing the data and using and interpreting all of this using the new tools computer tools, we've been able to produce the first subsurface exploration maps of the eastern blocks. Here, the key players in Gas Bay, Canada are Petrolia in purple, Junex in yellow, including Gold Field, and in bright yellow, Munda Regina has uh, permits in the eastern area and also in the central area. Gold Field is uh, prominently shown as is uh, Haldeman and Tar points, which produce from lower Devonian sandstones. Gold produces uh, primarily from lower Devonian carbonates. And the Munda Regina Eastern blocks are very close to these fields, about 50 kilometers away. And there is a lot of similar geology. Zooming into the Eastern Munda Regina blocks, these are the surface geology. Uh, so there is a large sin form here, and then there is uh, anticlinal ridges and a major anticline on the eastern blocks. Similarly, in the Galt area, there is a large uh, regional down warp, but there are local anticlines that produce at Galt Field in the lower Devonian carbonates and in the lower Devonian sandstones at Haldeman and Tar Point. A key to point out is Munda Regina has about 500,000 acres in the eastern blocks, the central blocks, and not shown on this map in western blocks. We're very close to the known fields that have uh, produced thus far. There are at least six pay, potential pay horizons from Devonian to Ordovician. There is a major wrench fault on the eastern Munda Regina blocks, which is important because it provides uh, fault pathways for the migration of both Devonian and Ordovician source rocks in the light oil window into all of the different reservoirs as occurs at Galt. And it also allows the, the strike slip fault, uh, the Grand Riviera fault as it's called, is a great opportunity to bring deep hydrothermal fluids to the surface, which it does on numerous outcrop locations, showing that both there's an active petroleum system and also uh, active hydrothermal dolomite on the blocks. Some of the key points is Galt field produces from lower Devonian rocks in both source from both Ordovician and Devonian source rock. Munda Regina has conducted geochemistry on the surface by Fritz Neuweiler that has also confirms Ordovician de uh, Devonian petroleum systems similar to Galt. And a very important finding is that the Munda Regina eastern blocks are in the light oil window. 
very important. And also, hydrothermal dolomite has found in, in numerous outcrops on the Mundu Regina blocks, uh, confirming active subsurface hydrothermal dolomite systems, comparable also to GALT. The key targets on the Mundu Regina blocks, uh, there are approximately six um, perspective areas. The two largest is the number one, the Mundu Regina Prospect, which is 10,000 acres, uh, mainly for the Devonian Forian formation and also Silurian targets. There is a very large prospect called the Abba Prospect, which is about 30,000 acres plus for Ordovician targets. And on the north flank of the Abba Prospect, there is also potential for Forian through Silurian objectives. When we look at the reservoir on the Mundu Regina blocks and compare it to Galt, we see that both have similar layers. There's a top seal, there's a seat seal, and the carbonate has a lot of uh, silica and fine grain deposits um, that when they are dolomitized at faults, they become uh, dol highly porous and potentially uh, capable of producing oil at great rates. Wrench faults connect this, the Devonian and Silurian reservoirs to the Ordovician source rocks and basement rocks source abundant hydrothermal dolomite, which creates both porosity, fractures, and we see lots of clues of this at the surface under Mundu Regina blocks. Mundu Regina um, is, has got very strong beliefs in safety, environmental responsibility, and good relationships. The stratigraphic well drilled in 2009 confirmed that there is lower Devonian carbonate objectives on the blocks, and this particular well was not in one of the subsurface prospects. It was mainly to just confirm stratigraphy, the prospects and the maps that we've created um, in the subsurface show that the well was drilled not in a, in a perspective trap, but in a very good place to learn about stratigraphy. And there are several very nice subsurface prospects that need to be evaluated. One of them is the Mundu Regina prospect. This is on the northern part of the block. There is a newly reprocessed line 11 showing north dip. There is a newly reprocessed line 8 showing south dip, both on the opposite ends of a major anticlinal trend at the surface. There appears a very nice fault that bounds this anticline, which is key because it's a conduit for not just hydrothermal dolomite uh, to enhance the reservoirs, but also for oil to migrate from the Ordovician into the various reservoir potentials, which include the Lower Devonian Forion all the way down to the Silurian. And to test, all of these objectives would be a very shallow well probably on the order of a couple hundred meters to the top of the Forian, and potentially down to around 2,000 meters would allow us to test all of the Devonian, the Silurian, and even the upper Ordovician uh, whitehead formation. Currently, the plans are to acquire additional seismic over this very exciting prospect. The ABBA prospect is a major anticlinal rollover of about 30,000 acres. This is the purple indicates the top of the Ordovician Whitehead formation. And you the, can see that there is a, on the southwestern flank of this very large anticline, there is a thrust sheet. And this thrust slice, slice contains the um, Mount Alexander well, which has the Forion dolomite, or excuse me, the Forion limestone. And we have synthetics on it and a lot of uh, analysis, petrophysical analysis, sample analysis on this well in the data room. This, the Forion in this well comes up to the surface, so it is basically uh, just a wedge of carbonate that's exposed at the surface. However, over on the Mundu Regina prospect, this is the same line that we saw moments ago, which is this is the south flank of the Mundu Regina prospect with the the fault showing that the Forion in the subsurface is a real good candidate for hydrothermal dolomite. And so this is the Mundu Regina prospect, and the Abba prospect would be made up of many Ordovician targets. We know from outcrops in the area that there are rich 
Ordovician oil source rocks, black shales. There are also uh, turbidite sandstones in the Ordovician. And we know from surface geochemistry that the, um, at the surface samples that uh, there are both confirmed Devonian oil source and also Ordovician source on the block. It's very exciting because this is a fold and thrust belt play and fold and thrust rail plays historically have contained a very large percentage of global hydrocarbon reserves and 28 percent of the world's giant fields have been found in fold and thrust belts like um, those prospects that we're exploring for on Gas Bay. Here are the subsurface maps. These were the first um, created for this project and this is the end of line 11. This is the line that basically dips to the north. This is the end of line 8 and it dips to the south with the fault. So there's a surface anticline recognized in here. So we see a very large possible 10,000 acre uh, anticline at the Forion level which is bounded by a fault and this is Galt Field uh, for at the same scale for comparison. It's expected to be about 30 million barrels of uh, reserves and uh, 330 million barrels of oil in place. So it's clear that this could contain a galt or two or three and so the next stage of the exploration effort is to shoot additional uh, high quality prospect specific uh, lines for prospect A which is Mundu Regina prospect and then to cover with this set of lines the northern flank of the Abba anticline which has the potential also for Forion and Silurian objectives and the Forion which is here in the um, Mount Alexander well you can see it crops out at the surface so this part of the very large Abba anticline does not have Forion present and it has been eroded. Looking at the Ordovician uh, Pabos depth map, which is basically the base of the Whitehead, we can see that the Mundu Regina prospect shows up even at the deep level. Also, this uh, northern flank of the large Abba prospect, and there is a very large, approximately 30,000 acres of closure um, for at the uh, base of the Whitehead formation on these structures. And there is a surface anticline recognized in the south, um, lead F, uh, with no seismic whatsoever at this point. So just to compare the Forion at the Mundu Regina blocks to uh, the uh, Forion in the Galt number one well, the Mount Alexander well is on the left, contains the shiphead top seal, includes the Indian Point seat seal and has about 650 meters of carbonate contained between the two shale layers and there's a slightly shaley zone uh, in the middle of the carbonate. There are abundant fractures recognized in the Mount Alexander well. This well was not drilled near one of the major deep-seated faults. In the Galt well, similar stratigraphy. It's a little bit thicker there. There's abundant fractures some indications of dolomites and as the Forion approaches the main fault at Galt there in the number three well it had a potential of 180 barrels of oil a day. Galt number four well had 10 DSTs, all of them oil, no water, uh, or water saturations of 20 percent SW so very high saturations of oil. Um, no production tests yet uh, but indications of a very large oil column at the, in the Galt field area and uh, perhaps a thousand meters of oil column. This is currently being explored by the Galt number four directional well which to explore for fractures and we think it has um, the potential to be a very exciting well for the Gas Bay Peninsula in the weeks ahead. Looking at the general stratigraphy on the Mundu Regina blocks, there is the De Lower Devonian sandstones, there is Lower Devonian carbonates, which includes both the Indian Cove and the Forion, and there are many uh, Silurian uh, reefs. Uh, we are not showing any of these on this slide, but the Silurian has got a lot of porosity due to carbonate banks, 
And then there is Ordovician shale, the whitehead here, and then the Dubach Ordovician black shale in the general area of the Mundurugina blocks, and then the Garin Ordovician sandstones. A quick recap of the Mundurugina Gas Bay um, Mount Alexander well shows that here is the Lower Devonian sandstones that we talked about, the York River, York Lake. This is the Indian Cove. This is the Forion. Um, these are the Silurian and Ordovician targets below. The Mount Alexander well drilled uh, the shiphead and Indian Point shells and the Forion uh, at a very high uh, angle at about 45 degrees. So th this log is corrected. Um, to uh, TVD. Thin sections from the carbonates in this lower forion show a very highly bedded um, silica, lots of sponge spicules, and a lot of carbonate. And in some of the photomicrographs, there's uh, hydrocarbon staining as well. Very exciting. In the oils produced out of Galt Field, there is great confirmation that the source rocks are both Devonian and Ordovician, and they're very distinctive oil signatures for the Ordovician. So there are two major petroleum systems at Galt Field. Looking at the samples on the Mundurugina blocks, Fritz Neuweiler prepared a very detailed report, and he confirmed from Rocky Val analysis, gas chromatography, uh, mass spectromic spectrometry that uh, similarly at the Mundurugina blocks there is a mixture of Devonian and Ordovician oils so there are also two petroleum systems uh, active on the Mundurugina eastern blocks. And another very important observation the thermal maturity was largely unknown for the eastern blocks. In the yellow and orange which is the light oil window the Galt area is light oil the Mundy Central blocks are also light oil, and there were no data points here. And recent work by um, Stéphane Sejourné and many field seasons of uh, collecting samples with Fritz Neuweiler has confirmed that this, the samples are in the, uh, also in the light oil window on these blocks. So this is, this is new information about the potential for these blocks. So just to recap, the Mundurugina blocks in the cent central and eastern gas bay are large oil targets, they're shallow, and there's a large acreage position of about 500,000 acres. The eastern blocks are near to the producing trend in Galt, Haldeman, and Tar Point. We've identified uh, large prospects for the first time ever by integrating all of the data. And the largest one is the Mundurugina prospect, which is Forion and Silurian and potentially Ordovician potential, 10,000 acres. And there is a very large Aba anticline of about 30,000 acres that has Ordovician potential and also on the northern flanks, uh, both Silurian and Devonian potential. We haven't really talked at this point about the central blocks. We are just reprocessing a very significant line called 10B that goes over the blocks and there is a major syncline that traps hydrocarbons in anticlines that are to the south and the light yellow and blue are the lower Devonian sandstones and lower Devonian carbonates at the surface it's a similar very similar setup to this entire productive trend over here so the Mundurugina blocks are exciting. There are about 500,000 acres in total. The eastern blocks have gotten most of the exploration effort at this point, and we can see that there are going to be a lot of exciting things ahead for the central blocks. Thank you for listening. That concludes the technical overview of the Mundurugina blocks. There is an extensive data room online 
And you can learn more by contact marketing at mundaregina.com. Many great um, individuals have done work on this, including Stéphane Sejourné, a Montreal geologist, uh, Mario Levesque, a uh, Quebec City um, operations manager. And one of the exciting things is not only the potential for new reserves for Canada and for Gas Bay, but also the potential for employment and to increased economic stimulation and one of the really great things about Munda Regina they've worked very well with the First Nations so that everyone will benefit from all of these uh, exciting prospects and the great oil and gas potential of this area.